What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to build a simple time series model that is forecasting crypto values. And more specifically, we are going to load our raw data, we are going to tune our ARIMA model, then we are going to run it and plot it just to visualize it. Then we are going to select the best parameters and run a final model, which is going to be the model we are going to deploy. And then we are going to build this Streamlit app from scratch where we are deploying our model. So in this app, on the left hand side, we can pass the crypto we want to forecast. So let's say BTC. Then we want to predict 15 days ahead. Click on predict. This is now calling our model, is identifying the best parameters and is running our model over here. So if I zoom out a bit, there we go. You can see that it's telling us that the latest close price of BTC is 101K. And then the forecast after 15 days is going to be 110K, as you can see it over here. Now we can test this model on different cryptos like XRP, for example, click predict. There you go. You can see the XRP chart is a bit different, but the forecast is still going up. And then if we check something like Sol, for example, which is Solana, you can see that it's giving us a negative forecast going ahead. But remember, this is depending on the time frame of the data we are using to train our model. It doesn't mean this is going to happen. So be careful how you use this model. It's just a simple forecasting model. Right. And before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right. Starting with the first thing we need, make sure you have all these libraries installed. And if you don't have them, then just type in pip install and then the name of the libraries like I have over here. Right, over here, I'm just loading our raw data and we are using Yahoo Finance library to download the cryptocurrencies data. We are specifying a three months period and we also specify the interval to be one day per data point. And then over here, we are just dropping any NAs. So if I run this quickly and then we visualize the data, you're going to see that we only going to have the date and also the close price of Bitcoin, which is the pair we have specified over here. Right, the next step now, I am just splitting our raw data and we are going to use 80% to train our data. And we are also going to use 20% to test our data. So we are going to run our predictions on unseen data that we know the values, which is the test data. And we are going to calculate the mean square error as an evaluation metric to see how good our model is. Right, down here now, we are creating a function so we can tune our ARIMA model. So first, I am specifying all the possible ranges that I want this function to look through. Actually, my for loop is down here, but in this for loop, we are going to be running this function. So first I'm going to create the function and then I'm going to pass it in the for loop. But the first thing I do is that I specify all the ranges. So for the P values, it's going to be a range between zero and four. For the D values, it's going to be a range between zero and two. And then for the Q values, it's going to be zero and four. Now, the higher the range, the longer it's going to take for the model to go through all the possible options and find the best parameters for your ARIMA model. So if you are going to increase this, you're going to see an increase in time it takes for the model to identify the best performing parameters and give you results. By the way, the P values are basically the number of pass values or the lags. The D values are the difference in order and the Q values is the moving average order. Right, so this function I'm creating, it takes as inputs the training data set, which is going to be the training data set over here, the test data set, which is going to be the test data set over here, and then the ARIMA order. ARIMA order is what our ARIMA model takes as an input in order to run ARIMA. So I try to run a model, the model is going to be ARIMA, is going to take as inputs our training data set, and then the first order, which is going to be our first combination of these three values. Then we are fitting the model, then we are forecasting and storing the predictions over here. 
and then we are also evaluating our model and storing the mean square error over here. Right, down here is where we are going to run this function we have just created. So we create a for loop and we are creating a dot product, which is a combination of our P, D and Q. So this is going to start with the first combination, which is going to be 0, 0, 0, which you're going to see over here, 0, 0, 0. Then it's going to be 0, 0, 1. So it's going to go through all the possible combinations. Over here, we are specifying the first order, which is going to be 0, 0, 0, as we said. Then we are running our function, which is going to return the mean square error and the model feed. And over here, we are just storing our results into results. Down here is where we visualize the model fit. So if the model is successful, because sometimes we get errors depending on the feeds, then we want to plot our actuals, our tests, and also our predictions over here. And the rest is just the X level, Y level, the legends, and plot.show. So if we run this now, by the way, let me show I've run this. Uh, I need to run uh, this. I don't think I'm run this. Then we need to run our function. And now we're going to run this for loop over here. So you can see it starts with the first feed, 0, 0, 0. This is the actual. So this is my test set. And the green is the predictions. And as you can see, it's terrible. We don't want this feed. Then this is a different feed. 0, 0, 1 is not good. 0, 0, 2 is not good. And then the model is going to go through all the possible combinations to identify the best performing model. So we're still going, let's see which one is the best. This one looks good, one, one, one. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, we don't actually have to visualize all this. We are going to select the model with the least mean square error. So down here, where am I? I think I've scrolled too much. Uh, where is it? Yeah, down here is where we are running our best model, which is going to be the next step. So the first piece of code, it takes the best order, the best mean square error, and the best model from our results. And this result is basically these results over here. So if I run it quickly, so you can see what it is. Uh, results, copy, paste, enter. Um, this is our results. This is the order, if I'm not mistaken. Let's check. Yeah, this is the order. Then this is the mean square error, which is this one over here, the second bit. And then the best model fit is these models over here. So let me remove it quickly. Uh, then I am printing our best order. So let me print it so you can see it's 313, our best Arima order. And the mean square error is this number over here, which is the minimum we were able to get our model. Then I'm predicting the next 15 days, which is this red line you see over here. So this is completely unseen data. Then we are plotting the results. We are plotting the test and train predictions. We are plotting the future predictions. And then over here, we are adding the title and X, Y uh, legends. So this is our best performing model based on the data set we have and the parameters we have used. In the next step now, I'm just copying and pasting all the code in one cell so I can make sure that it works in one go because in the next step now, we are going to start creating the Streamlit app. And in the Streamlit app, we want everything to be in one cell. This is why I've done this step, but it's basically a copy paste with all of our code we had above. And if we run it to see if it works all in one go, you can see it's running. It's going to repeat all the steps we have done above. And at the end, we are going to have our final model, which is going to be the model we are going to use in the Streamlit app. There we go. The final model is this one and it's telling us the best order and mean square error. Right, so now we have a code that works and we want to take the code now, put it in a Streamlit app, make some inputs variable like the cryptocurrency and also the days we are going to predict ahead and deploy it in our app. However, I'm going to showcase how to do that in the next video. This video is going to be just Python. Next video is going to be the Streamlit app. Right, thank you very much for watching this video. If you feel that you've gained enough value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos.